This is a Shug the Dog production. Before we had political correctness, we had shipbuilding and shipyard shenanigans. Episode 1. Lost Barrows and Hairy Thumbs. Tom is working in the workshop on a turning lathe. Hey Tom, did you not have the guard on using that machine? Hey, nosy. Mind your own business. New street cleaner AB is called into his manager's office. Up yours too, Fry. I wouldn't be going in there, mate. He's a grumpy old coffin dodger, that you. You asked to see me, Mr. Fry? Ah, uh, come in, John. Come in. Take a seat. How you doing, big chap? Christ, that bandages that you're wearing qualifies as a turban. Not good. Uh, are you feeling up to this right now, John? Because if you're not, we can put it off for another day. Well... That's the council spirit. Now let's see what's in your report. Ah, so you're saying you were sweeping the street when the masked men appeared grabbing your brush and beating you. And all you could do was curl up into a ball before they ran off with your barra. Uh-huh. Ah, the dirty rats. And on your first week as well. You see, you can't identify them. They were masks. Yes, it says that. Well, the barrow hasn't been found, but you can hardly be held responsible for that. We'll get you a new barrow, and when we're up to it, we'll get you back out on the street again. When I was your age, no one mugged a street cleaner for his barrow. What's the world coming to? You take care out there, son. Within the yard workshop, Minger is sweeping up as Smitty enters. Is that cold out there? I met a brass monkey looking for a welder. Did you tell it to try the welder, Thorpe? No, it's a turn of phrase, Minger. There aren't actually any brass monkeys looking for welders. Oh, all right then. Just try to help, Smitty. I know you are, Minger. Hey, what's that you're sweeping up? Looks like they've been filming the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's fishing, chaps. I threw them down to help me get all the blood off the floor. Blood everywhere. Fishing chips. Is somebody get battered in here? Tom was using the lathe and cut his thumb off. Did you not hear the ambulance siren? No, I was on the boat working with the brass monkeys. Well, I thought you said there wasn't any brass monkeys. <sighs> you were telling me about Tom's accident. Well, Tom cut his thumb off on the turning lathe and Robbie told me to sweep up the blood with the fish and chips from the carpenter's shop. Wood chips. That's right, wood chips. Is that your jar on the bench? What's in it? Tom's thumb. I found it and put it in the jar with some river water. I thought he'd want it when he gets back. The water's too dark. I can't see anything. It's in there all day. You don't think it would have been a better idea to take it to the hospital and have them try and sew it back on? I never thought of that. You think I should take it to the hospital now? When did it happen? Over an hour ago. And how long have you had it in the jar? Not long after they took Tom away. Well, given it's been in that dirty water, I think the only thing you would be gaining him now would be septicema. Would that be good? What I'm saying is... I think the horse has bolted on this occasion. Never mind, it'll be a surprise when he comes back to work. Which horse are you talking about? AB is called into his manager, Mr Fry's office, again. And you say you are no more than two minutes in the toilet? Uh Uh-huh. And yet the warden who booked your barrel roadside, said he booked it on his second pass an hour after seeing it. Hmm. 
Hmm. Fortunately, this time we have managed to retrieve the barrow, although it costs us £60 from the police pound. Hmm. Now, you're new here, John, but remember the barrow is your responsibility. If this happens again, the cost of retrieving the barrow will have to come out of your wages. Got that? Uh-huh. Good lad. Now get back out there and take care. Within the workshop canteen, Minger attempts to return Tom's thumb. Get out of my sight, you crazy useless arsehole, and take that with you. Ready! Hello, Minger. Was that Tom that was shouting? Yes, it was, and he was nasty. I take it you were presenting him with his thumb. Did he tell you what to do with it? Yes, he did. He told me to stick it up my ass. Ah, the anal projectile. I hope you're not considering it. No, I don't think I could manage something that side up my ass. And was there any witnesses? What, to me trying to stick it up my ass? No, I mean, did everybody there hear Tom say this? Yes, he was shouting. Then congratulations, you're now officially the owner of Tom's thumb. Really? So, if the thumb now belongs to me, can I choose whether to stick it up my ass or not? <laughs> The thumb does indeed belong to you. That you can take to the bank. I can. <laughs> Aby is again summoned to Mr Fry's council office. I'm disappointed in you, John. That's now the third barrel you've lost. You know old Jock McNeil hasn't lost a single barrel in 26 years. He's tipped to have my position when I retire. Now let's see what's in your report this time. Mm -hmm. I was brushing path in park when I was set upon by circus midgets who beat me and stole my bar up. Is that it? Uh-huh. I see we have a witness this time, a woman who says you were sitting on a bench drinking wine from a bottle before falling asleep. She then seen some kids come along and beat you with your brush before running off with your barrel which hasn't been found yet. They were circus midgets. May the good Lord give me patience. They were wains. I checked and there's no circus in town. Now this envelope contains your first warning. It means your jacket is on a shaky nail. Understand? Right. Sign out another barrel and get your ass back out to work. Minger is sweeping out the yard maintenance toilets. Left you something in there, Minger. Thought when I heard flushing you hadn't left me nothing. Not a chance, Minger. I'm not one of them gits that take the cleanliness of your establishment for granted. It was an Indian we had last night, so you might need to pull on your rubber gloves to find it. Hey, Smitty, I was looking for you to ask you something. Ah, Minger, my good man. Of course I've left your usual gratuity down the pan. No, it's not that. I have a question. As you know, I'm not qualified to solve medical problems. No, it's not medical. I wanted to ask you about the tips you leave me for keeping the toilet clean. For which you deserve for winning the cleanest toilet in the yard for the last eight years. I'm not ungrateful, Smid. It's just about how you leave the money. That's the problem. <sighs> I think I understand. It's the way we drop the coins into the pan and you have to fish about amongst the poo to retrieve it. Yes, that's that. Are you saying you'd prefer we just hand you the coins? I never really thought about that. I was going to ask if you could make me a slicer, like to slice up the logs. To slice up the logs? Right, leave it with me. I'll see what I can come up with. Thanks, Freddy. You're one of my best tippers. My pleasure, Minger. Aby and Duke 
are in conversation within a train station. That's just not fair, big man. If you say it was circus midgets, it was circus midgets. After all, midgets don't only travel in circuses. Shift he works in the gas tank, he ain't office told me he's never ever seen a circus. See these feet of clowns. Uh-huh. Hey, check this wee lassie. Watch the boat neat that worker. Looks like her next meal's about to be served. She's getting ready to move. Right. I'll bump in there. You grab the burger and mind. I've called to offer it. Oh, I never saw you there. No problem, head. Oh, you've dropped a burger. Damn, oh, I've got to catch this train. Hey, you big galoot. Where's my offer? What's only sniffing it? Hi, Mars, you bear. Hand it over. I feel sorry about taking that for that wee lassie. But she did take a wee bite to it. Smitty is working in the workshop as an excited minger rushes over to him. Smitty! Smitty! Mango! Mango! I want you to see something in the jar. Look! Hey, give me a clue. What am I looking at? It's the thumb. What, Tom's thumb? It's my thumb. You say so. You only told me to put it in the bank, only I felt safer keeping it in my locker. So why are you showing me it again? It's growing hair. Really? It could be wearing a bikini and pole dancing for all I can see through this water. Wait. I got a torch. See? I can see something. It is wearing a bikini. And it's pole dancing. Where? No, it isn't. But it is growing hair. It looks like bum fluff. Maybe it's fungus. It's hair. Oh, if you say so. I suppose you'll be taking it for a haircut. Oh, I don't think I'll be doing that. Sweeping the street, Aby is alerted to a van screeching to a halt. MI5, is this your barrel? Uh-huh. Do you believe in your country? Uh-huh. We're apprehending this barrel in the name of national security. AB is back in an angry Mr. Fry's office. Well, did they or not? I, I they did or I they didn't. And you see, it looked like a little red fibber book they held up. Uh huh. That's because it was a little red fibber book. Oh, mate, you'll never lost a single bar in twenty-six years, and you've lost four in the time you've been here. Oh, the council aren't happy, and neither am I. Here, this letter is your second warning and notification that 10% of the cost of replacing the barrel will be deducted from your pay over a period of four weeks. You got that? Uh-huh. 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 Now pick up another barrel and get your lazy ass back out there. This has been a Shug the Dug production. <laughs> Shipyard Shenanigans was devised by James T. Tiffany. Written and directed by James T. Tiffany and produced by Shug the Dog Productions. It was recorded at HQ Studios Glasgow and edited by Samson Video Productions. All music was obtained from royalty-free sources. The roles of Tom, Chris and Louie were played by Chris J.W. Healy. Amy by Benjamin Smith. Old Fry by Colin McGregor. Hattie, Man in Black and Nosey by Logan Samson. Smitty and Angry by John Hughes. Minger by William Spears. Duke by Brian Brady. And The Girl by Beverly Sweeney. The narrator was William Sampson. <laughs>